In this section, I'm going to talk about frictional laminar flow and how the pressure losses can be um, uh, dealt with and how they're calculated. Okay, so you've I've already talked about Bernoulli's equation before. And if you recall, we said that Bernoulli's equation stated that the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure plus potential pressure is equal to the total pressure. And therefore, if we knew that uh, it at one point we could work it out at another point. However, at the time, um, I stated that this equation neglected friction. But as we've been talking about in this lecture, we can't neglect friction because we know um, that it occurs in the real world. Um, and it occurs as shear stress, as I've already shown, and um, also as um, friction between the, the fluid particles themselves. So now, whenever we were going to write um, Bernoulli's equation, we're going to include an additional term, as shown in red. And this is going to be um, the pressure drop, which is due to um, the, the friction that we've been, we, we've been talking about today. So we need to know how to calculate this, and that's what I'm going to um, show you in the next couple of slides. So before I talk about what the actual pressure loss um, for laminar flow, I um, just want to show that the um, this relationship. So it can be shown, I haven't shown the, the proof here, um, that the velocity distribution across a pipe for laminar flow, this is only true for laminar flow, is given by this equation. Okay, so I won't, I'm not going to read it out. But, um, so just say that R in here is a um, distance in the pipe from the centre line and capital R is the radius of the pipe. So you'll perhaps notice that this um, equation is a quadratic, and um, so what it means is it has a parabolic shape, as can be seen in the schematic on the right-hand side. So as I said before, the flow on the, um, the, the velocity of the fluid on the wall, due to this non-slip condition, is the velocity of the fluid on the wall. So if this is stationary, then the fluid is also stationary. And then it increases up to a maximum velocity and back down. And we can see that if, um, just from the equation. Because if we set um, the radius of um, the, the, that we're interested in to the radius of the pipe, then we have capital R over capital R, which is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So therefore, the velocity will become 0. On the other hand, if R is equal to 0, I we're, i.e. we're on the center line, then we have uh, r is 0, so this term becomes 0, so we um, th this bracket becomes 1, and we have our maximum velocity. The other thing just to point out for this equation is that um, it has um, a negative, uh, a minus sign at the front of the equation, and the reason for that is, is that the pressure decreases with um, the direction of flow. So the same way that um, heat flows from uh, high temperature to low temperature, fluid will flow from high pressure to low pressure. So um, it, it, otherwise you'd end up with a negative velocity. So that minus sign is in there because dp over dx would be uh, negative because the change in pressure with x is negative. So just to make sure that's negative is in there just to make sure that the velocity is positive. Okay, so using um, the equation on the previous slide, it can be shown, and then, again, I haven't shown the, the proof here. We can show that the pressure loss is related to the volumetric flow rate, the viscosity of the fluid, the d length of the pipe, and also its radius. Now, if we rearrange this, we can rearrange this for the pressure loss, okay? And this is an equation, so this is only true for laminar flow. I'll show you um, in another lecture how to work out the pressure loss in a pipe for um, turbulent flow. But this is only true for laminar flow. So now we have a relationship for um, the pressure loss down a pipe. So if we know the volumetric flow rate and the length and radius, which we probably will for our system, we can work out the pressure loss. And then we can put that into Bernoulli's and then use it to solve for um, whatever our our problem is and there's some worked examples online that will show you how to do this okay so just finally um, it's also um, helpful to know not 
um, just what the pressure is, but what the power is required to um, move uh, fluid down the pipe. So if you think you you know you want to know this is particularly useful if you want to size a pump, for example, to know um, you know you've got certain flow um, characteristics or certain flow requirements, and you need to size a pump for that particular application. So um, if we consider you know the the schematic on the right hand side, so um, power is equal to um, force times velocity because it's um, force times distance per unit time so it's um, force times velocity and the force that's acting on that fluid is the pressure times the area so if we know that pressure times the area is equal to the force we can substitute that in so we get pressure times area times velocity and we know that the area times the velocity through that area is the volumetric flow rate so therefore the power um, for the flow can be written as um, the pressure times the volumetric flow rate. Okay, that concludes this lecture. Thank you for listening.